former MLB All-Star stud for the Rangers, World Series champion. It is Mark Teixeira. Good morning, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. How are y'all doing? We're, do, we're doing great. I, I wanted to ask you this real quick because we asked a bunch of players this in spring training is you win a World Series and that's amazing. And us fans are still basking in the glow. But so many Rangers players in spring training were like, it was awesome but we have to turn the page because that time is over. Is is that how it is for you and all ball players? That's exactly the mindset that you have to have because we all know how hard baseball is. We all know how difficult it is to win a World Series. And if you start spring training or, or even start a season thinking that you're the champion and, and you know, you're know you going to kind of ride this out for as long as you can <laughs> – Baseball tends to humble you pretty quickly. So, so I love the, the fact that all the Rangers players understand that there's a lot of work to be done. Well, Tex, I, I really wanted to talk to you right now because you're the fifth, you were the fifth overall pick in the draft in 2001, and you quickly made it to the major leagues in 2003. And right now the Rangers have a young man in Wyatt Lankford who was the fourth overall pick who has a legitimate chance to maybe make the team out of spring training. Can you talk about maybe the pressure of being such a high pick and then the expectation of, I know it, it, when you were coming up in 03, kind of changing the franchise possibly from a team that was struggling to win, but Wyatt Langford possibly joining a World Series team almost right out of college? You know, I, I think there's, there's two ways to look at it. You know, number one, you know, there might be a whole bunch of pressure on him, you know, you know, Whenever he gets called up to the big leagues, whether that's opening day or, or sometime during the season, you know, he's going to have to be a part of the defending world champion. That, that's one way to look at it, and that's obviously, you know, puts a little bit of pressure on him. The other way to look at it is I'm going on to a great team that just needs me to be me. You know, I, I, don't, I don't have to be an all-star on day one. I don't have to carry the franchise. I don't have to be the savior. And I think a lot of high draft picks, most high draft picks, come into the big leagues on poor teams, on teams that aren't very good, and that's, that's why they're high draft picks. So I, I think Langford's got a chance to, to kind of slide into a really comfortable spot during the season. I'm not sure how they did it, but can they do it again? Last year, the Rangers pretty much had two pitchers the entire run through the playoffs. And we had two relievers, too. We had two relievers as well. And I'm just kind of curious, when you like how, how do they accomplish that? And then can they do that again as their pitching isn't going to be really healthy until mid-late season? Well, it, it takes a few things to win a World Series. Uh, you know, one, is, one is a great roster. You know, per performance, obviously the guys on your roster have to perform, but you need to be lucky. And, and you know, th there are times during a playoff run where you finish a game and you're like, man, we didn't deserve to win that one, but we'll take it. And, and you know, the Rangers had the great roster. They had the performance. They had the heart. They had, they had the leader. I mean, you got to love what Bruce Bochy did for that team. So they had all of the ingredients. But they also you know, had some breaks, right? You know, some, some things happen that go your way. You don't want to have to go into this season and this postseason with two pitchers, right? <laughs> yeah. And so, so when you look at what Max Scherzer and Jacob deGrom can bring to the team midseason or, or later on the season, whenever they do come back, if you now have them with Evaldi and Gray and, and whoever else is going to step up, because you never know who else is going to step up. It might be Dunning, whoever it might be. Um, like this team has a chance to do it again, but you know, you're going to need some breaks. When, when you talk about being lucky, is it okay that me as a fan and a commentator still feels like everybody thinks the Rangers were lucky to win that World Series? Because it doesn't feel like they get the respect you would think a defending champ would get going into the next season. Yeah, you know, I, I think every, every team that wins a World Series deserves to, to be applauded and deserves the respect. And I think the Rangers, what they did probably surprised some people. And immediately after the season, it was like the Otani show, right? And people forgot yeah. that the Rangers had an incredible season. I think this offseason was extremely um, – it was unique because of the Otani sweepstakes and the $700 million contract – I think in a normal off season where 
you know, maybe the Rangers needed to go out and sign somebody big or, or re-sign their star, they would have gotten a little bit more press and a little bit more respect. But, their te- you know, the team didn't change that much. I mean, this is, this is a team that they made their moves. You know, they, they made the, the Corey Seager, Simeon moves a couple years ago. They made, you know, the Scherzer, DeGrom moves earlier. So they didn't, they didn't win the offseason headlines like a lot of World Series teams usually do. Mark Teixeira joining us here on 105.3 The Fan. Tex, you were kind of known as a slow starter in April and May, but at the end of the year, you'd have your 30-plus home runs, you'd have your 100-plus RBIs, you would have your you know really good batting average. Were there times in spring training after a few years where you would change your routine or approach to try to get off to a better start, or did you just always stick with the same routine and then just know, I don't know, like – confidence didn't fade during the season just know by the end of the year i'm going to find it and i'm going to have my numbers that i always have i i tried it all <laughs> i really did I, I tried everything in the book to get off the better starts but the fact of the matter is is that i was a switch hitter that had to kind of relearn how to hit every year and i know that sounds crazy um but you know mike we, we talk about there are players out there there are hitters out there that can get out of bed and get two or three hits yeah. Right, like guys that show up first day of spring training, and they don't even need spring training at bats. They could go into the regular season and be fine. I was not that guy. I I grinded. I was somebody that it took me a little while to get going. I had a right-handed swing to worry about. I had a left-handed swing to worry about. I was absolutely a timing guy. Like when my timing was on, I don't think there was a pitcher that could get me out. When there were, when my timing was off. It didn't matter who you threw, I wasn't out, right? So in spring training, and you, know, you haven't taken a live at bat for three, four, five months, whatever it might be, it, I was like relearning my timing, relearning my swings. And, and just because of that, I got off to slower starts. And, and I tried it all. It had really nothing to do with my preparation or my, um, you know, my workouts. It just, I had, to, I had to get my timing down. It took, took some time. In spring training, I was hoping you could tell us a little bit more about, obviously we see a lot of games taking place on the backfields. What's the dialogue like between you and the pitchers? Because obviously some of the pitchers are trying out new pitches or new strategies as well. Well, it's funny. If, if you know a pitcher is going to be on your roster, you, you talk to him all spring training. Like, you know, if, if Nate Evaldi and I are playing together, Like, I want to know everything that he sees off me. I'm going to tell him, hey, Nate, I really like the way that cutter, you know, that backdoor cutter, I I couldn't see it, you know, whatever it might be. But if he's a fringe guy that might be on a minor league, you know, invite or non-roster invite, I'm not giving up too much because chances are I'm going to face him on a different team. (laughs) That makes sense. (laughs) So so I'm going to, you know, my guys, my guys that I know are, are, are my stud pitchers. We're, we're talking all spring training long because that's the way that you get better. I, I think as a hitter or a pitcher, you get better learning what your opponent is doing against you. And, you know, I think the best players, they, they really work together. Tex, people might forget this, but you came up as a third baseman and a, and a good defensive third baseman, and then you turned into a gold glove first baseman. Can you talk about the challenges of going from, you know, about a three, uh, sorry, a 11 and three fourths glove approximately to then a 13 inch glove at first base and, and the challenge from, from switching from one side of the field to the other? Well, I, I remember showing up in spring training and, you know, the, the Rangers were coming off a pretty dis- disappointing season, last place finish in 02. And in 03 spring training, we had a lot of hope for guys like me and Hank Blaylock and Michael Young and Kevin Mitch. A lot of the younger players were going to be the future. Well, one of the problems was me and Hank Blaylock were both third basemen. And, you know, I found out really quickly, and, and Buck Showalter and I talked about this, Hank was a much better third baseman than me. He was more consistent. He had played third base his, his whole life. I, you know, I was a shortstop growing up. I didn't really start playing third base full time until college. So I, you know, I, I wasn't as good as Hank, and I was taller and I had longer arms than Hank. So it just kind of made really it made sense that I was going to be the one switched to first. And as, as soon as Rafael Palmero got moved to the de- designated hitter spot full time. Like, I just settled in there. I worked my tail off. took me about two years, you know, 03, 04, to really get first base down. 
But, uh, man, I loved it. I loved playing first base and, you know, kind of the, the career that I had there. Uh, you know, Hank Blaylock did me a favor, most likely, just, you know, being on that team and being a better third baseman. We're, we're pretty fascinated by Evan Carter's patience at the plate, the way he works uh, pitchers and gets a count, and basically to, he forces pitchers to pitch to him. And I was kind of curious. Everybody has different approaches, obviously. The, the count kind of dictates that. But in those moments, did you? how often do you think you knew you were about to hit a home run before the pitcher started his windup? Like, I got him. He's, he has to throw this to me. Yeah, there's, there's a few times a game, there, there's maybe two or three pitches a game where you have a chance to do damage. And that, that's how good the pitchers are. Wow. And the, 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 the more you can get into 2-0-3-1 counts, the better, the better your odds of getting that type of pitch. Um, I mean, guys are so good nowadays. They're dropping in 2-0 curveballs, you know, 2-0 cutters, you know, backdoor, whatever it might be. So, so when you, especially at a young age, 21 years old, when you have such great strike zone discipline, over a long season, you're going to get more of those pitches to do damage, and 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 obviously you're gonna you're gonna get on base more because you're gonna walk more. And I'm just I've been so impressed with him. I mean, this is one of those kids that uh, I'm I'm sure Chris Young and his agent have already had conversations of like, hey, what would it yep. take to sign this this guy to a long term deal? Because if I'm betting on a player to have a a long successful career, man, Evan Carter is not a bad guy to bet on. Tex, this was awesome. I have 10 more questions for you, but, you know, time restraints and we got to get to a commercial break, man. It was great getting to talk to you again, and you have so much information. Hopefully during this Ranger season, we can have yes. you back on and talk about what's going on around Major League Baseball and the Rangers. We'll do it again. I'd love it, guys. 